sure recording in progress jolly good all right you got a nice connection good picture yeah uh that's a good thing where i am we have uh uh, gigabit fiber internet provided right. by the our local government nice yeah so it's only like fifty dollars a month yes communism is good for something <laughs> <laughs> yeah right. let me just i got some notes i just want to bring them up here um, all right so can you i don't know i guess first of all like uh just kind of explain what your background is like related to the the app player system yeah so before a direct relation to that, I was in the Navy from 92 to 98 uh, as electronics tech, and I worked on all sorts of things, not on aircraft, but uh, general electronics. I worked on uh, radar, crypto, UHF, really kind of everything, but I specialized mainly in like crypto, uh, UHF, and radar. And then after I'd got out some years later, then I got involved at Raytheon in Texas and started working on the AT FLIR program right away. Uh, the one difference with that, uh, to me, what was new was the integration of optics is where everything else has been, you know, a lot, all uh, electrical and electronic theory and, you know, mechanical as well. And now putting optics in here, which was actually really cool. So I got to learn a lot. It was I, I say it was a pretty cool experience because that was some really cool technology even at the time. You know, the system's, you know, uh, 20 years old now. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's still pretty cool in uh, how it works, how it's developed, and then the integration and packaging of that to, you know, what what's ultimately going, you know, on to uh, the aircraft. All right. Uh, so you, so then you, you worked as like a test engineer on the, the app player? Yes. And yeah, yeah. Which is weird. You always called it, you know, some like at Raytheon, they always called it AT flare. And anytime I'd hear it, like outside of that would always be right, called yeah. like at flare and yeah. it doesn't make a difference. It's the same thing, no. but I shall try to call it the proper. Yeah, well, yeah, well, that's the thing, you know, what's proper? Do, does the right. Navy, do they call it at FLIR? You know. Yeah, I guess I'll just stick with whatever comes out of my mouth automatically because yeah. I've, yeah. I've been talking about it for years now, so it's going to be at FLIR, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine with me. So, okay. uh, yeah, so I, I was thinking, like, uh, you know, you, you've seen my video, the one on, uh, mm -hmm. on the rotating glare theory. Uh, and I guess, like, you know, what I want to do is kind of maybe kind of go through that a bit and then, or just, First of all, just going to give me what your overall impression is about the the likelihood of this rotating glare being a thing, and then how, as you understand my theory. Okay. Uh, oh, I have to pull up my comments to make sure I got like all the the notes about that. But uh, uh, first of all, that that video that you did with the uh, the presentation that had everything you could put in, and I thought that was. That was pretty wonderful, you know. Right. That you know got to show, you know, how the sensor uh, is looking with the with the various you know inputs and what you're seeing. Uh, one thing that was missing there, and I don't know if uh, some of the documentation I uh, didn't have it, but there is actually a yaw in the gimbal. Oh, really? Yeah, and I didn't see that in that uh, simulator. Now it's only a few it's only a few degrees, but there is a yaw. Hmm. That is very interesting, <laughs> and it is so. So, so we've got like the big. Let me just get something that can demonstrate this. For this mm. is the long, the long tube of mm. the gimbal, so it can rotate around. You know, just rotation along, rotating mm. along its long axis, and then there's a uh, tilt. Yep. Would you call that like well, this is roll? Obviously. That would be roll. Uh, and then this pitching, or just yep. uh, pitch. And yep. then, then your like, yeah, there, yeah, saying? there's yeah, there's a slight yaw in the gimbal. And I said it's only it's only a few degrees, but it just really? kind of helps with the stabilization and whatnot as well. So uh, the model that that you that you got, uh, did you develop that or did someone yeah. else? Okay, yeah, well, I did. 
Yeah, well, great job. Yes, there is a yaw in there. And yeah, that changes uh, everything. If this is true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now it's it's not it's not a lot. Like I said, it's no, really it only it Yeah, it's only a couple degrees, but it does kinda, you know, help with some stabilization, you know, if, if you think of the yeah. aircraft kind of going through, you know, whatever is going on. But yes, there is a yaw in there. And the yaw is in the gimbal inside mm -hmm. the ball. Let me just pull up some some images here yeah. so we know exactly what we're talking about. I'm going to share my screen. Yep, go right ahead. Uh, let's see, desktop two. And I'm going to bring up my little collection of images. Yeah, there were a couple of them, like some of the PDFs wouldn't pull up, but I was able to get some of them. Oh, really? Yeah. They wouldn't open? Yeah, it, well, yeah, they just, um, uh, actually, they wouldn't even decompress. I don't remember which ones yeah. it was offhand. Dropbox. All right, well, uh, I can send them to you again if you if you want to look at them. Mm. Just let me know what didn't come through. But let, let me just find this real quick. Okay, at Flare. Sorry, I've got like a bazillion links on my thing. So I'm just going to bring up some images of the at Flare. So here... It's, it's a little low resolution, but it'll do. Mm -hmm. So, where would this this yaw be then? On, okay. On this? So you you see the ball portion where uh, uh -huh. you know that's uh, and you and you can see the part where it does pitch. Um, right. So this is yeah. this is the pitch here. The yes. Ball is yes. Like around yeah. The so and even there, you can see um, the the gold As we roll. Yeah. Okay, so um, where you see the the gold, that's uh -huh. the that's the primary mirror. So yeah. so that's you know part of the the gimbal. So or I should say, kind of, I guess kind of the the inner working of the inner part of the gimbal, as where the the outer structure part, you know, with the uh, the windscreen and all that. Uh, that would be the outer part, which is still, you could say, technically the gimbal. So as far as the internal gimbal, so that yaw is inside as oh, well. Okay. Yeah, so it's right. it's kind of floating inside there. It's uh, counterbalanced by uh, other mirrors, and then whenever they needed to add things like other weight, uh, they'd use like tungsten weights, you know, because tungsten's nice and dense, and that way you can put, um, you wouldn't have to have like a, a large mass of, you know, steel or whatever, you can have something nice, compact tungsten, you know, place them in there, and that way you can have nice counterbalances. So it's just really kind of floating steady inside there. But yeah, the the yaw that's in there, it, it does only go a couple degrees. So, I mean, I'm wondering if that's kind of like what I'm talking about with, uh, you know, kind of this this slack thing. You know, I talk about the the, mm -hmm. the, the little mirror uh, additional mirrors that move the beam internally mm -hmm. give you a couple of degrees of pitch. Is that the same as this this yaw that you're you're talking? This is kind of rotating just the primary mirror. Yeah, it's um, it's it's it's, it's not rotating per se. Like if we're, we're looking at uh, my hands, and I wish I had something to better um, it's kind of like illustrate. tilting. Uh, <clears throat> like so, it would just be like you know, this, I need a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if if we're looking, you know, into this, into, you know, to this speaker, and it may be kind of hard to discern, actually, maybe this end would be better because there's a reference on here you can see. So, uh, you know, this be rolling uh, okay. the pitch, and then, yeah, there's just a couple degrees of of yaw. So, yeah, I mean, that, that kind of sounds like, uh, you know, what, what I kind of, you know, describe as being the, the slack in the motion, kind of what you see in the in the patterns. Let me mm -hmm. bring up a patent image here. Um, right, so this is one of the patterns here, and it's, it's it's a little hard to read exactly what it is. But let me just clear that. Uh, clear all drawings. Okay, so this is like the body, and this is like the the bit the ro mm -hmm. the rolls. Um, so you've got let's see, you got rotation axis. Oh, this is actually not the right the right image. I think you need a different one. No, that's not it either. Um, hang on a second. Is that it? All right, so this is it's kind of also a little hard to see, but like there's a ro there's a roll axis, mm -hmm. uh, and then there's going to be like the 
pitch axis, and then there's this, I guess, would be like a yaw axis, which is kind of... Uh, so you've got essentially three axes, yes. but one of them is internal. Well... Three... Yeah, yeah, so... Axes at which you can tilt hmm. the head, essentially, or the... the, the, the sorry, the... Um, the optical path. Yeah, so the the yaw is the only one that's contained entirely internal. Yeah. So and that this. Here. Yeah, and that's in the inner portion of the gimbal. There's no yeah. it's no adjustment of mirrors that the the whole physical gimbal is actually um uh oh, pivoting inside. So just like to try to tie this to like the videos that we're looking at. What mm -hmm. year were you working on this when you saw this? This is uh, 2000. So yeah, I was there from 2006 to 2013. All right, so that's pretty good, I think, because the mm -hmm. 2014, I think, was when the gimbal video was shot, as I remember, was now, it 2016, but now, not too long after that. Now tell me, why do they call it the gimbal video? <laughs> I, because the gimbal is what, it's, what they're talking about. I think. Yeah, I mean, obviously, that's what that's my theory. But. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, that, that's just not a very good name for it. Anyway, um, yeah, there were a couple things I did. I did uh, notice in that in that video, and um, one is that uh, this is not the. At least I couldn't find like the the raw file or anything kind of close to it. There was still like quite a bit of artifacting going on. Right. And I've got, let, me, let me bring up the actual the the raw est file here, um, so I can look at that. So if I go to gimbal here, let's move this out of the way. Yeah, okay, that's so, probably one of the clearer ones I've seen. So yeah, that's yeah. good. And we can zoom in pretty well mm -hmm. here, and you can see things down at the pixel level. Single step through them. All right. So, what does what do you what does this tell you then? Uh, right now. So what I. So yeah, let's, let's start at the beginning. I think. I was, so yeah. right at the, at the start, mm -hmm. it's uh, in white hot mode. Yep. And then he switches and... to black. Yeah. Um, one thing. One thing he did, do, which unfortunately, um, you know, limits us on information. You see that DCLTR at the bottom, right? Yeah, declutter. Yep. So unfortunately, that gets rid of a lot of information, um, yeah. which is unfortunate for for you. But you know, for the pilot, it's it's obviously advantageous because it just uh, clears the screen of information because you want to be able to like just focus on the target now that would happened right there at that at that if you can go back a couple seconds yeah. right, right there. there so you see how it gets off center uh-huh that's that to me that that was the my key that there is this is definitely nothing wrong with the ir sensor okay because if there were if there was an issue with uh, the pixels yeah it's all moving <laughs> Yes, it, they, yeah. they would be, you know, if there were dead pixels or whatever, um, they they would always stay in the same position no matter what. Yeah. yeah. So so if someone has been saying that, that's that's complete. Yeah, I don't think yeah, anyone yes. said that, like, except for, like, fairly early on in the discussion, mm -hmm. uh, like, saying it was, like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a sensor error. I mean, I think everyone kind of agrees that this, what mm -hmm. we're looking at here is a real object. Mm -hmm. uh, the dispute is really is, is this... The actual shape of the object is it some kind of saucer shaped object mm -hmm. or is the saucer shape uh the shape of the the glare uh from the from the whatever it is the heat source the engines yeah this uh, one's a little odd because uh you've seen uh images of where where yeah it's been focused in on a jet and you can actually see it pretty clear mm -hmm. so i'm kind of thinking that for one maybe they're not focused in very well. So there is a, a focal yeah. length in there, and it, this may not be set. But unfortunately, they did like the declutter, so you can't see the focus values, which would be kind of like on the on the left side towards the bottom. Yeah, let me just go to the uh, the FLIR 1 video real quick. Uh, oh, no, I didn't want to do that. Uh, hang on a sec. I can't use my own tool here. Video, and then change the video to FLIR 1. So in FLIR 1, 
mm. we've got this focus thing here mm. uh, and I was wondering like you know this says focus eight this is mm. kind of like a different you know completely different type of thing but I wonder if you know like you know what the numbers would what situations the different levels would be used in I really don't remember because this has been yeah. this is knocking on ten years ago. But yeah. uh, the thing is that uh, there are different uh, focal lengths that they can set up, like uh, on their. Uh, they have a controller uh, f uh, for like on their stick, and right. they can adjust the the focal uh, length as well. So, so you're saying the gimbal video then might be a little bit out of focus, which might uh, you know, accentuate the the size of this the glare. Yeah. Yeah, if it is a glare. Yeah, so. if it if it is a glare. Now, you asked uh, about the halo around that and mm -hmm. I said that's that's actually uh, part of a software uh feature that can be turned on and that way it it highlights um what is hot and being tracked. Do you remember what that's called or what the button would be labeled? <sighs> Ooh, I'm going to have to go through the uh the documents some more about that, but uh yeah, that they had something in there, and normally when we were doing like a lot of the testing, especially when you're trying to get like uh, the contrast in, we'd always like kind of have that turned off. But then again, we would always have a very stark contrast, you know, to mm -hmm. test with. We were having like very clear uh, lines, you know, for targets uh, out in the the field like this, you know, where you know there's going to be like kind of a lot of gradients, and some stuff may be a little close. Yeah, you do want. Um, that greater that separation in there to where you can you know see it a little better so that's what what that is so uh that's that's not an an aura because also yeah. if if this were if this were an aura uh you know like a heat aura right now you're in black hot well it should be darker it's lighter yeah so yeah. that's so not the case the theory is that it's some mm. kind of uh uh like warping of space and time which mm. uh, I yeah, ooh, that would be, I do, I really don't think I don't I don't think so either. Yeah, I'm well, just, yeah, I'm just telling you what people <laughs> yeah you know, originally said it was, but I think most people mm. kind of accept now that it's just you know uh, uh, a function of the camera or an artifact. You know, essentially, it's a fun, it's the camera that's doing mm. it. It's not actually it doesn't really mean anything. Yeah, and actually, just today, um, someone said it was certain that what it is, it's a it's an insect that is a. Uh, on the optics yeah. and and i i said this this is going to be disproved in a in a bunch of different ways uh for yeah. one well the thing you, you pointed out that movement there is yeah it's yeah the there's whole scene moving yeah and for anyone else who's going to watch this the reason i know that this is not an insect is for one the the eosu the electro optical sensory unit is purged with nitrogen for one and that right. that helps uh, keep everything dry, you know, with the change of temperature and any moisture that may build up on the optics. Uh, second of all, is uh, it's it's in the you know in the center, not moving. And if uh, like right now, you see in the top left, it's narrow. So this is it's mm -hmm. it's focused in you know uh, pretty far because uh, that's the that's the most zoomed in um, field of view. Yeah, is that one. Yeah, so if there was an insect on there, you wouldn't see like a small, sharp, you know, image like this. You would see something incredibly blurry, like, you know, what the heck, like someone smeared yeah. oil on your camera. Yeah. Uh, the third. Yeah, I think that's obviously an, a, a theory that people just come up with. Like some people said it was like bird poop or something mm -hmm. like that on the, on yeah, the, the windshield, but obviously not. Obviously yeah, not. So, and it's not that. And then also, um, if it's, if it's um, internal to the, like before the gimbal, uh you know like on the electronic fold mirrors well because it's right in the center that's also in the middle of the path for the uh, auto alignment so you would just see this image just spazzing all over because it has no idea um where where to to find center yeah. uh do you know about so, like the auto alignment feature uh no i don't yeah it's actually it's actually pretty clever uh they use what is called a quad detector system and I'm gonna use gonna use this again, but it's it's different. So the quad detector um, is is essentially a a 
a circle <clears throat> like this uh, that is split into four. So just think of four shapes, you know, from a pie. And anyway, throughout the optical path, there are laser diodes that uh, that shoot energy along the optical path. Well, its goal is to hit into the center of that. So there's there's a couple. There's one along the visible uh, visible path, and there's another along the IR path. And if it starts drifting, um, uh, you know, into one quadrant more than the other, yeah. then it's 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 that information is put into this feedback loop, which tells those um, electronic fold mirrors to steer it back in. That makes sense. Yeah, so if something yeah. is blocking that, yeah, it's just gonna spaz out. So, so uh, let me, let's talk about those electronic fold mirrors mm -hmm. again. Like, um, you know, in, in, in my theory, like, uh, you, you, we noticed that the, the, the amount that the object rotates, you know, this, this object, you know, parent object here rotates. Mm. Oh, sorry, let me just share the screen again so I can, uh, so you can see it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the amount that this object rotates is the, the same as the, uh, the EOSU, the forward part of the pod would have to rotate. And it follows the same mathematical curve, but it kind of does it in steps. It's mm -hmm. not it's not smoothly following it. And the theory there is that it's rotating in steps uh, because it doesn't need to continually rotate using the big roll motor. So it's using something internal uh, to uh, to to do the tracking uh, until it gets too far away from where it needs to be. And then it needs to actually do a roll at that point. Uh, so when you talk about the the fold mirrors, you know, could that be what's doing that that fine tuning tracking, or would it be what you described as the the your system? Yeah, or, the, or a... yeah, the, the it would be it'd be a combination of of really all the axes, the the fold mirrors, those electronic ones, those are before the gimbal, so those would be between the sensors, either the IR camera or the. Uh, or the uh, low light uh, TV camera, and there's a you know electronic full mirror, and the only uh, reason that that's there is is for uh, stability and uh, for auto alignment as well. So remember that that whole quad detector thing. So yeah. one of the ways that that it'll uh, get that that beam to where it wants to be is it's it's going to like adjust that fold mirror you know to get that beam uh from a laser diode to the quad detector to get it pointing to the to the center okay does that make sense yeah i think so i think so uh but it's, it's a little hard to visualize exactly it, it is <laughs> uh, yeah it, and the one Im path. yeah the one image i saw um is uh, not really not quite what was in there. It was kind of a, a grainy color diagram of um, like a cutaway of like the EOSU. But uh, yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, I imagine you probably don't have images, you know, of that. So of like the internal of the EOSU. Not really. I mean, this is probably like the best thing that's that yeah, that's got is like a schematic. Yeah, that that's that's it. That's so later, it's I guess, are they? yeah, I. I I, I think the only thing I can say that'd be, you know, kind of uh, accurate about that is the fact that, um, uh, well, I'm guessing it's showing an IR invisible path. Yeah, because it's demonstrating the common optical path for both IR and visible. Yeah, yeah, and, and that's really everything else. Yeah, it looks completely different inside. But anyway, yeah. where that... Um, um, uh, kind of, kind of like that first big um, ninety degree bend on the left, which is kind of towards the center of the screen, uh, the blue one, okay, right, right there, right there. Yeah. yeah so um, that that's about yeah, you know, like kind of where that uh, where uh, one of those electronic fold mirrors would be, and okay. and like I said, that's going to help. Um, it's like a mirror there, I think. Yeah, and it would just be. You know, instead of, you know, flat, it would be off at a, like a 45-ish. Yeah. And um, it just has uh, three three points uh, 
that are uh, magnetized on the back. Um, when it's unenergized, it's kind of cool because that mirror is just it's just flopping. <laughs> but when it's charged, it's boing, it's it's just mm. solid. And then okay. you know whatever impulses it's getting on three different points, uh, you know it's it's telling it to you know pivot in one of these directions, and it's just happening really fast. So so it's it's pretty cool. Pretty it's it's kind of simple yet in ingenious way of uh, you know keeping everything aligned. So. Uh, going through the this video here, like one of the things that was was noticed is that uh, at various points there is these little jumps. It's, you can see it go mm -hmm. jump up and down as well as rotating, and the jump appears to go just before the rotation. Yeah, and and um, uh, if can you roll over those bumps again? I'm I'm actually looking at the clouds now too when when that's happening. Okay, let me uh, let's get it. Let me just. Okay, so. Uh, the... Yeah. It, okay. So yeah, it's it's moving. So the whole image is moving. Yeah, the whole okay. image is moving. I kind of mm -hmm. verified that. Did a little bit of, uh, like motion tracking on the whole image, and you yeah. can see that the clouds move at the mm -hmm. same time as uh, as the thing bumps. So it's the camera mm -hmm. movement, either the. Either the entire plane's bumping, or mm -hmm. either the camera's moving, or this, one of the mirrors is bumping. Uh, what what is what do you you think that is? And again, that could have been anything that you said. Um, yeah, you know, if um, that could have hit, um, you know, a dense pocket of air, you know, in in the aircraft, and you know, cause it to you know take a you know sudden uh, uh, change in direction. Uh, so someone suggested that yeah, this is kind of like the alternative theory, which I, I don't think is that likely, but I should mm. put it out there, is that the the IR profile has changed in a way that's not visible to the video, and yet the motion tracking detects this change. So like it got hotter mm. over here and less hot over here, but it just looks the same in this, and then that makes the whole thing kind of bump. Hmm. Right there. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sure. I'm not really seeing a, a significant enough change because if you look at the tracking brackets too, that would be another thing. Is that the, you know if they're staying you know pretty similar. Oh right, yeah. So the tracking brackets would follow it if, yeah. if it was that. Yeah. That makes sense. This uh, I don't know if you know this, but like, you, we can see at this point when it moves, it's it's got these these interlaced the video is interlaced mm. do you know much about the recording system that's used uh in the cockpit to record this video really don't know yeah that'd yeah be, every, that'd everything be a different system yeah it's yeah totally different system but ironically okay. lately i've been learning the f-18 and dcs <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if you ever messed around with that yeah, a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's got like a, a quite comprehensive app player simulator in it as well. Yeah, the F eighteen is pretty hardcore in that game. Yeah, yeah, I haven't, uh, I haven't really played it, but other other people have kind of used it to recreate various aspects of this. Of course, you know, it's not exactly the same. I uh, just, it's just, I just create a crater in the ground. I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty new. I've only had it for like a month, so. Yeah, yeah, so. Uh... All right, so let's keep going through this. Um, so, oh, here was another thing that if anyone wants to say this is an insect and this is to me, then this should be the obvious. And I, I made a comment about it that, uh, you know, still try to keep in the blue. And I was like, okay, there's all these other things, but also the third thing is, I'm like, I don't know too many warm blooded insects. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that should be that should be the biggest it's, giveaway. It's something hot. It's something yeah, hot. It's something have, hot. You ever, have you ever seen anything like this before? This this like as a say a glare when you're looking at uh, a heat source. Mm. I mean, you said like you think it would have to be a bit out of focus uh, to to have this this size of a glare, well, or the shape of a glare. It's it's not. Um, it's the 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 reason i say it might be like kind of an out of out of focus uh on on the ir is that there's just really no real definition 
Yeah. You're 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 just seeing like kind of a, a like almost a 2D shape, as where if you've seen images of like when they're tracking jets, you could see like you know lines. You can see like rivets. You know on this you know on the side of, the, of yeah. a plane. We don't have very many pixels here, so it's, no, you, know, you wouldn't you wouldn't see that much anyway. Yeah. But you, we're seeing a you know a shape. Yeah, and unfortunately we we don't know how far away it is either. No. No, right. that's another uh, bone of contention. There is like exactly how far away it is, but uh, well, it's well I said we, we know we know it's in um, uh, narrow, so it's yeah. it's going to be it's going to be uh, pretty far out, as in miles away. Do you kn do you remember the field of view, uh, like how many degrees um, how old it was? So why yeah wide. wide yeah, wide is a one to one. I think medium was. Oh man, I think medium was two, and uh, I want to say narrow was. It was at least four. I know that much. Four, four what? Like oh, four, four to one. Magnification. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like at yeah. least, and it could be more. I, I don't know because, and uh, the documentation I looked through is a. Uh, yeah, it didn't really say. It's like, yeah, I, I don't remember what it is, but I believe uh, that's what it was. Is uh, uh, wide field of view was one to one, and then it ju it just kept uh, stepping up. So it, it could actually be like a four and eight. Uh, so I don't yeah. remember. I the wide the wide field of view, I think, is still actually fairly fairly narrow. It's only like six degrees. So oh, you're saying the there. field of vision? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, I think because... relative to each other, they do double each time you uh, you go through. I think that you go from wide to uh, to medium to medium two times to narrow to narrow two times, and each time it doubles. Yeah, uh, and, in... and those other ones, those are um, those are software like uh, when you're getting okay. uh, wide and then wide two or whatever, or medium medium two. So those those whatever what you would call like the twos, those are software. Uh, that as far as the, um, the physical optical uh, zooms, they're they're just three. Now the tracking, like w related to that, uh, when it's tracking, and if you switch between one and two times zoom. Does it always do the tracking on the one time zoom image? All right, uh, did I say that again? So like you've got two images here, like what well, mm -hmm. this is always in two times zoom, but in, mm -hmm. in some of the videos, it switches between one times and two times. And, uh, you know, we know that the, the tracking works by, you know, essentially looking at the, the pixels and like you know, mm -hmm. bracketing an area of contrast or something. Now, if it switches from one times zoom to two times zoom, does that change the tracking at all? It does not. So, like in this instance, um, like you see, it, it's two right now. I kind of wish we'd see the one, but uh, right now, so this is that's the software yeah. zoom in. We can look in FLIR. It actually, you can see it change in. Uh, oops, in the FLIR video, it's so like here's one mm -hmm. and there's two. And there's two. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and as you see, like. Um, uh it's 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 a super rapid uh change yeah, nothing changes yeah when when um so when you scroll through the uh like field of view and let's say you're going from you know uh medium one to medium two and then you go again and then it goes to, like to narrow um yeah. you're going to see the whole screen flash and the reason yes. it does is because there's another fold mirror that's coming up now you actually see an interesting thing here mm -hmm. in the FLIR 1 video, mm -hmm. uh, right, let's see, right here. Mm -hmm. You see, like, we're in, let's see, we're in narrow, narrow. one times, and then it goes, uh, you see the, the, the object, like, whiz off to the side, and it goes into... Um, yep, uh, the wide, wide field of view. Yeah. yeah, it's either, yeah, it's hard to tell if that's an M or a W, but that's it's why... A, it's a W. Okay, but that's that's a big reason why it, you'd see that thing uh, go off. So if anyone's going, oh, well, that's proof of something or disprove something, no, all that's all that's happening is you're seeing the, the physical mirrors moving. Yeah, 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 that's what I was, that's what I was suggesting. Like mm -hmm. Some people think this is actually, it's actually moving very rapidly. Since we're no. looking at FLIR 1, uh, let's look at the, the end of FLIR 1. If you've looked at this before, 
but yeah, is, this one I have. Kind of a, this is kind of a famous movement. Like at, at yeah. the end, let's see, we're in uh, medium field of view. Then I think it switches to narrow one times. Yeah, so here we're narrow one times. So right, right there, I'm just going back a mm -hmm. bit. So going forward from here, uh, it switches at this point to narrow. So it's going from medium to narrow. And I don't know. So it's yeah. So it's still in. Yeah. Now it's in narrow. The the display I noticed lags a little bit behind the actual physical change. Uh, yes. Of the the zoom. So. <clears throat> So those like that that indicator of um, what field of view you're in, so it it still takes like, um, you know, like about half a second for those uh, uh, those mirrors to engage and disengage. Right. So um, you can hit the switch and you see the action, but it's not going to register until the mirrors complete their action. Until it's kind of locked in. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So it's switching here. Uh, and I think it's actually, yeah, it's gone all the way to it. And then, right, so now, now we're in narrow mm -hmm. now. So here, uh, I don't know how familiar you are with the tracking thing, but this is kind of an interesting little, little thing here. So we switched to narrow one times and the, the object is a little bit, you know, a little bit outside of the tracking area and it, then the, the, the bars widen and then the next frame. Uh, the bars stay pretty much the same. The object you know, keeps going, mm -hmm. and then after that, you know, it's now outside uh, the tracking area, and there, that the tracking area is getting smaller for some reason. It's kind of zooming in, thinking it's found something. Whilst at, at that point, the the object moves over here, and now they switch to two times zoom, so it kind of like doubles in size, and then it just kind of like boop 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 off to the side. I don't know if you can kind of tell what might be happening there, because my you know my theory is like you know just simply like the the guy taking the video is switching between the zoom levels, uh, and each time it switches between the zoom levels, it has to regain the lock on the object. Like here, the the object's moved off to the side. It's trying to do it, and for some mm -hmm. reason, it just fails to do it just because it, it just ends up outside on this frame, and not quite finished the transition between the two uh, settings. Yeah, and you can see where the brackets are and then uh they I believe they still also have to have to also actually um uh press something as well to like you know get it to you know reacquire the target and that's when you would see right. uh like the bars you know like 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 right now it's it's thinking it has it right which it does have it there yeah and it's barely yeah, it's got it there much. and yeah. um then it looks like it should have it there, but then mm -hmm. the object itself looks a little blurry here because it's, I don't know, it's like maybe between modes mm -hmm. or something because you see it's bright here. And then on the next frame, it's like that. And then the next, it's, like, it's bright again. I've never, actually never noticed that before. It's kind of dimmer on this one. Whoop. Right there. Yeah. yeah, well, maybe not. Anyway, so it loses, it loses lock. But. Yeah, and also, uh, let me see. So it's a, uh, uh, well, it's a, I guess it's like eight degree, eight and five degrees. Yeah. So also, we don't know. You know, hey, are we at the uh, limits? So let me see. I think, uh, yeah, the top, the the one on the left, that's the that's pitch. Uh, or, there, that's pitch. yeah. That's five degrees up. Mm-hmm. And then and eight degrees left. I mean, that's. I mean, that seems like it should be well within the range of motion. Yeah, yeah it should be, but mm. yeah, yeah. And again, you know, the system's not perfect, but at least you get to actually see a little more on this screen. So it's it's very blurry, on, but oh, this is it's, if you zoom in, it's getting even blurrier. This this mm -hmm. ninety nine point nine range. Do you know what that means? So that's supposed to um, like that. That quadrant is supposed to be like um, where the sensor is above ground. That's that's the information that would be displayed over there. Yeah, why well, it's saying ninety nine point nine range. I thought this was the range to the target. 
Yeah, if if that's something that's being now the thing is that would have to be fed from like radar. Okay. So if it's uh, not getting anything and maybe that's what it what it's seeing and that that's kinda like, you know, how some things will just be like all nines if it's you know, doesn't register anything. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you should be seeing coordinates uh uh there otherwise. Yeah, if it in the uh GoFast video which is yes another of the videos. This is an interesting one. Is this the, the Tic Tac one? This is the GoFast okay. video, uh, which is apparently was filmed at the same time or in the same flight as the the gimbal video. But this mm -hmm. one actually has a, a range in it. So in this one, like you can look at the the whole video, like at the start, they're just kind of uh, you know, moving around and they're trying to capture it and they they eventually box it and then it starts tracking. And after it starts tracking, then this number shows up, the range, mm. which appears to be the distance to the target. Yeah. And we've also got a, a VC here, velocity, closing velocity, velocity closing. I'm actually surprised with the size of it and how fast it was moving that, that it grabbed it like that. That's pretty good. Yeah. I suppose they would have to get it. Looks like the, yeah, they did it. In the right direction. Yep. It's quite a bit of... Yeah, and then got it there. And then it just tracks it. So the theory with this one is that it's 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 not actually moving that fast. It's uh, it's it's moving slower because it's actually kind of halfway between the ocean and the plane. If this number is correct, uh, which which uh, some people dispute, but if you if you do the math based on this number, it uh, it ends up being halfway between uh, the plane and the water um let's see i got a few questions here that i was uh, and we talked about the shape of the glare well well if if you were to give your say your professional opinion based on you know what you you know about the system uh do you think that the rotating glare uh hypothesis or the theory is uh the more likely one or you know, does it seem to you like this is actually you know, a real saucer shaped object you're looking at just this is a simple like you know which do you think is more <clears throat> likely yeah now as far as uh let's say a glare to for something to produce a consistent glare because the jet itself is is moving it's closing if i remember right it's closing in plus it's you know banking and changing direction so for something to keep like a consistent glare on something uh it would either have to be you know a flat object that is you know always pointed towards the sensor which what do you know that can do that and then uh set the other would be if it is a rounded object and maybe something was, you know, reflected off of that, well, it's going to have to be a lot of energy because, you know, a, a convex uh, object is going to, you know, disperse, uh, right. you know, energy, you well, know, like yeah, crazy. Well, what we mean by a, a glare here isn't a reflection of the object, though. It's uh, it's the, the heat signature of the engine. Uh, so it would be like the, the engine of the mm. jet like let's like, say so this looking straight at the camera and you get a big glare like mm. that uh and i think you're kind of thinking that yeah. it was like you know, reflecting light off it yeah and uh and to me it's let me see i'll show you another video yeah. just to show you yeah. what i'm talking about yeah yeah and i think it did and that's i i think i get what you're saying like if it's this is looking directly behind uh, whatever the you know the propulsion is, yeah. Like you actually and there and that. and doing that if it if it's washing out everything, yeah, then then yeah you can't de um, discern the shape of the craft. Yeah, so I can show you another example. Um, from Lair. reference. So. This video, okay. This video is a video of a small jet, like this this jet here. Mm -hmm. It's a little little trainer jet, I think, and it produces uh, a heat signature 
which I'm describing as a glare because it's like mm -hmm. you know like the glare of a camera it's a lot bigger than the uh, the actual object itself your heat signature you normally think as being something that that looks like the shape of what you're looking at like either the plane itself or the you know the cone of the exhaust and this is actually kind of a a, a dark blob and it's uh, you know it kind of looks in a way it looks a bit like the gimbal it's, mm -hmm. got, it's kind of like you know diffraction spikes coming out of it and it's kind of a bit longer in one direction than the other what is is this is this like a, a lantern uh i think this i don't i don't know actually i don't think it's a lantern i think it's a kind of a more of a, a civilian uh, like okay. FLIR type of video uh camera maybe like you know star sapphire type thing but oh it's uh not sure which system it is. Let's see, let's look at the. This is uh, another version of the same one. Yeah, it doesn't tell you what it is. But it's you know it's a thermal camera, obviously, and you're looking at a plane. You're able to uh, switch between uh, visible TV mode and uh, infrared mode, and it's black hot. So and these are supposedly to scale. So and this is what's yeah, I think you can actually just see the, the wings of the... Yeah, you can barely the see. The wings there. But this is kind of a, just an example of what I'm talking about, mm. what it would be. And you mentioned earlier it being a bit out of focus, and the guy who took this, uh, Dave Fouch, she was a, a FLIR technician. Uh, it works, you know, kind of a civilian, well, I guess civilian slash military company, but um, he said he, he had to mess with the focus a little bit. And it was interesting that you said when you looked at the gimbal video uh, that you thought that for it to do that, then the focus would actually have to be perhaps off a little bit. Um, but we can't see that because they've decluttered uh, the the screen. So we yeah. see, yeah, it's the same same type of thing. In uh, oops, let me just move that up here. Zoom in. Bring the other one up. Now. Um, one thing that, that, that is odd, is, you know, with this is that, uh, looking at the, the, actually the, um, that second one, the, the one you have labeled the stab, uh, can we see the, the full frame? Is there anything else that's ever in the image besides, uh, the, uh, uh the see. other one, the stab? Yeah. 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 There uh, we go. The stab one was the stabilized version of this image okay bring this one up so you can see the full thing okay. uh so uh, yeah so i think it's, it's starting out uh i think it's starting out in, yeah, in white hot and then it switches to black hot okay uh go to before that where you can see still see the trees and stuff okay yeah it's in white hot here okay and well, that's uh so like i guess this is in focus if that's the type of thing you're mm -hmm. looking at the trees are not this is like a power line i think yeah oops let's see and that's a zoom yeah because he zooms yeah so he's right at the start here is a couple of power poles which are all in focus so the focus is at least over there But not incredibly. I mean, like when it switches to visible, then the uh, the plane is is visible, or oh, slightly blurry. Yeah, but, but still, you know, pretty good. But you said this is yeah. one of the civilian ones too, so. Yeah, there's there's some other ones that he has like that. They're kind of different. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Um, all right, let me show you this one. This is kind of. A, a useful bit of reference. So this is, um, let's see, it says it's either an FA-18 or an F-15, and you're seeing it tail on at first, and you see it bank away. Mm. Now, this is kind of interesting for a couple of reasons, I think, yeah, obviously, first of all, we're looking at the tailpipe of an object and we're only seeing the glare and it mm. pretty much covers the whole plane, which is, you know, what, I'm, what we're suggesting is, is going on in the gimbal video. Yeah, uh, it's just weird in that in that instead of like um uh more of a blob like this, the other one is yeah. uh 
is kind of more defined and stays kind of defined. Yeah. Uh, and then you've got this this stab one here, which then has the more blob like yeah. thing, but it's just not rotating because it doesn't it doesn't have the same type of gimbal mm. uh, mounted camera. And you go back to that clear system. Yeah, take a which look one? at that F fifteen. This one here. Yeah. Okay. So let me I'll play it from the start again. You can tell me which bit you want to look at. By the way, that is an F-15. Okay. <laughs> In case you need to know, that's an F-15. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, good to know. So, uh, so I think what's interesting here is uh, how mm -hmm. we, the contrast changes. Yeah. As as we go through, like it starts yeah. out, all we see is the exhaust because uh, it's it's trying to like balance the scene, uh, and then the plane kind of comes in as a kind of a gray ghosty mm -hmm. type thing, and then. As the engine becomes less and less significant because it's pointing away from you, you know, at some point, like, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, right here, you can still see the hot bits of the engine, but when you get to here, they're just kind of hidden away, like you know the. the, the yeah, now it's like kind of turn. Yeah, like now that. it's now it's like kind of turning everything yeah. black hot. And then, yeah, everything gets a lot darker as it, the contrast uh, gets adjusted. So I'm wondering if that might, yeah, you know, if you look if you look at the gimbal video. Is there anything about the contrast in the scene that makes it, you know, maybe it's, it's overexposing? Uh, yeah, this this was taken at night. I know, which doesn't help because it would have been nice to at least get, you know, see what um, uh, the camera got as well. But yeah, and one thing I also didn't like too is this video is short. It's just, did they just cut it off? I can understand well, yeah. where where the start would be like, oh crap, there's something there. Finally, turn on the recording. But why did it just stop after like 30 seconds? Yeah, I was talking to somebody about that today, and they were saying like, you know, who made this decision? Because this is something that it had to be kind of uh, approved for public release because mm -hmm. it's something that might be you know, kind of classified, uh, depending on what's actually going on. Wait, which, which, if that's the case, I totally understand it. Oh yeah, no, obviously, yeah, it's you know, it, and the beginning, uh, but the, to me, the you know, like uh, you know, if it's like in the heat of the moment, like oh shit, there it is, and then you know, um, then you turn it on, so it's you know, you're starting it late because. So, uh, do, do they have to switch on the recording though? Cause I yes, it recorded full time. No, they have to switch it on. Okay. At least yeah. that's how it is in the F-18C, like okay. the C and D. Yeah. So the I was e talking to somebody man. about this yesterday, and someone was telling me that this should be on all the time, so they should actually have like you know a full hour of video, but maybe not. Yeah, know. and maybe they do like on the on the E's and F's, but on the the C and D, there's a it, it's like uh, look at it the front, it's like kind of in the lower left, and that's where like the video switch is. Yeah. Now, so I was wondering like. Uh, would the pilot set like the gain on something like this, or would there just be like a default level that they would use? Well, and unfortunately, that information is not on here too. So there is an AGC, an automatic gain control, as well. But yeah. you can also set gain manually as well. Yeah, yeah. I'm just wondering, like, if it was automatic, would and you were pointing at the back of a jet engine, would mm -hmm. it actually look like this? Yeah. So that's that's what I would be doing, and. You know, for one, maybe you didn't know, and they're kind of freaked out, like, what the hell is Because remember that there was audio saying, hey, this, it's like there's a fleet of them. It, it said something to that effect. Like, you know, it was, hey, there's a, like a bunch of them or whatever. So, you know, they're they're flying in there. And they have no idea what the hell's going on. And he's probably not on his mind right now other than like, hey, I need to intercept this. Yeah. You mentioned like uh, you know the yaw earlier, and mm -hmm. the uh, so we've got like something like I do in the in the simulation is like I've got all the different angles of things, and then I work out from that where the the pod head should be pointing at. Mm -hmm. now, do you know um, what if there's a specific mounting angle of the like say the roll axis of the uh, of the Atlas system like relative to the the main axis of the jet? Like you know, when you kind of uh, mm -hmm. when your wheels down on the carrier, 
the angle of the jet would be at zero, I guess. Like yeah. The, the, pit, the pitch angle. And would the pot itself also be at zero? Yes, it would. That Yeah, so a default would be that... Um, so stowed... Um, yeah, unfortunately, I wish I had a little more. Yeah. My trying to stay awake fuel uh, <laughs> is that uh, it's going to be stowed up like this. You can see the logo here. So imagine the aircraft is, I guess, pointed down this way. So it's stowed like this, but then when it's deployed, it, it kind of comes down to like 180 degrees because it's actually stowed okay. 180 because that gimbal is. Um, uh is actually stowed away upside down and curled in and that's to you know to help protect it but then also um uh there there's a uh kind of like a a min miniature black body and that's what it's what it will use to calibrate itself i don't All know right. if you had that information in there or not yeah, no, the black body. Uh, yeah, I think you mentioned that before, but it's not something I was that familiar with. Yeah, and that's that's something that that I could do uh, calibration with. Now, um, in the let's say the heat of the moment of what they're doing, and they didn't think about it, because that's that's another thing I'm wondering is it was, you know, was this thing, you know, uh, did did they do their you know quick cal or did they do their calibration, mm. you know, before they deployed it. And I'm kind of thinking they did because I think the image would probably be a little sharper. Interesting. That is interesting. So, does that mean that some of the angles might be off, like the the pitch angles? Uh, no, not the angles, but just the image quality. Okay. In that, I'm All thinking. Right. I'm thinking it it should be pretty sharp uh, because um, just from like uh, you know what I'd seen, you know, at Raytheon. This this thing's pretty sensitive and pretty accurate. Like, yeah, there are times you know I was giving tours to uh, visitors that would come in, like from colleges or you know other countries and stuff. And and for like demonstrations, I could have like an EOSU off the side of a test station, and you know put my hand in front of it and have a look at the screen. You actually see like the veins in my arm, and right. and then I'd have my hand on a on a book and that or you know a, a note notepad and then you know point it up to the unit and you see my handprint on that but then i'm yeah. going through the pages and you can see you know the handprint still through all the pages that it's going through so it's it's a really sensitive uh unit and can do a lot of detail and i'm kind of thinking that uh the calibration just wasn't done on this because um i would also th uh think the clouds would be uh, sharper as well. Yeah, that's another thing with the clouds. I was wondering, there's, there's quite a lot of contrast in the clouds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which, which means... yeah, it's. I mean, that's that. That's good, and that that just shows how um, you know sensitive it is. Um, um, I don't know if you know how uh, uh, far down the detector is chilled. Uh, no. But... Um, that one I don't know if I'm at liberty to say, but. Let's just say really freaking cold. cold. <laughs> yeah. Yes, like like liquid something cold. <laughs> liquid nitrogen, I would imagine. Yeah. So like, here, like that's kind of an interesting point there. The contrast it, within mm -hmm. the clouds kind of indi indicates the kind of the dynamic range of mm -hmm. the image. You know, it's kind of going from you know this this whitish you know, light gray here to a dark gray over here. Then we've got black here. But that's, I guess, relatively close to these. Like, if you can see detail in the clouds, that's kind of it kind of explains in a way why you can't see detail in in this this blob here. Why the blob is, you know, where the glare is so big. Mm -hmm. If it's set to expose for the clouds, you know, the scene of the clouds, mm -hmm. it's not actually, uh, uh, you know, shrinking down that that engine in the way that we saw in that that's that that other video, the FA18 video. Yeah, so uh here. Yeah. We see like let's see, I don't know, it's like I just, can't really see much of the the other things. 
Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Well, I just wanted to see if, like, if that, you know, suggested anything to you, the fact that you can see this, this contrast within the cloud. Like, they, they seem to, you know, the clouds themselves. What, you know, what's actually going on here? This is, these are just clouds. They're yeah. all going to be about the same temperature. Uh, they're being lit by mm -hmm. the moon. Or, uh, or yeah, what, well, actually. and again, that just shows how sensitive the thing is. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that that's kind of the bad thing about this and that uh, the dynamic uh, range of the heat that that it can detect is is pretty broad. And that's what makes it uh, so special and uh, better than like kind of any civilian stuff so like you can see right there you know on the clouds is where maybe like a civilian one you just may see like you know just one uniform gray blob but this mm -hmm. you're seeing uh variances you know in there you know it could be uh like you notice the tops of them are are um you know white so it could mean that hey the tops of them are a little cooler you know maybe you know half a degree you know cooler than uh yeah, you know what's what, below yeah. that but I'm looking at the sky here, I guess, because hmm. it's the sky above the clouds. Uh, so, yeah, you'd expect that to be a lot cooler than the clouds. Yeah, and again, we don't know what altitude they're at. Yeah. So, it, it's kind of hard to say because, yeah, it could be it could be five thousand. Yeah. But uh, the point I was trying to trying to make with all that is that. Um, you have this big dynamic uh, range uh, mm -hmm. for heat that you can uh, detect, but you're working within grayscale to display it. And within that, you're also trying to um, do some auto correction to, um, you know, help display some stuff in the middle. Yeah. And so it's like you're trying to be like, okay, I want to focus, you know, on here and, and, you know, give the range to this thing but also still don't want to ignore everything else that's around here. So there's kind of like some software uh, trickery that has to go on to make that possible. Do you know like uh, when it takes an image, like a single frame, it's, it's taking like a 14-bit image, I think, like a 14-bit grayscale image, which covers the full dynamic range. And what I'm wondering is like, other hardware adjustments to the sensor that change the gain or is it all done in software like there's just like one raw image and then it's all software or is there electrical ways in which the gain can be changed so there 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 is um I remember let's uh, well i know for the focal that's actually there is actually a, a physical focal um adjustment the gain right. Um, I believe it's actually all uh, all electric. Okay, if I remember right, yeah, uh, it was it was it was all all electric. So it, like I said, it 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 can detect you know quite a range, but uh, it has to take uh, you know whatever information it's it's given, and then now you kind of have to decide, hey, do I need to bring the gain you know up or down? And they're just doing that um, electrically, and then well, also and from here, from what you, from all you see, like in the, of course in the middle, you know that is software. Right. This this yes. uh, image enhancement type thing here, yeah. the the aura. Just wondering, like the um, the black hot and white hot modes, mm -hmm. they're not inverses of each other like you can't take a, a black hot image and flip it uh one to one and get the the image the other image like if you take yeah. this image yeah can you go back to this image yeah go okay yeah if you can get it to where the frames go that that's what they should be they is that they should be the inverses of each other really because yep. i mean they're very much not i don't know if i can do tweak it in here now i can't but uh, yeah, if you if you stick them into Photoshop and you you flip them, I could, I could actually do that very very quickly. Like I just grab this one. And again, let's say you know it still may also be the software saying, hey, what's going to be visually the best for you know the pilot? Yeah. 
So instead of just looking at a black screen during the day, which would not be good. Let's see, uh, that one, so. Yeah, so to me that says there's a pretty good inverse because now remember the tops of the clouds where they were white in the other one? You see they're they're dark now. Yeah, yeah let me, okay, let me just do that again. Just grab that one. So I've got two that are the same. Just load up foot, bring them into Photoshop. I'm glad you're better at Photoshop than me. <laughs> it takes me forever to do something in that. Well, I'm just going to use it to invert the images. Uh, yeah, and see if they get close. Yeah. So yeah. Here's, here's one in Photoshop, and I bring the other one in and just drop it on top. That's another layer. And if I take this one and invert it, it turns out like that. Right. Now so that's just a perfect inversion, but that's mm -hmm. uh you know, so this is this is the black hot, mm -hmm. this is inverted black hot, and this is white hot. So they're very different in terms of uh Yeah, uh show me the uh natural black hot. That's natural black hot. Yeah, so one thing to notice on there, and you can tell that they have to do something, you know, in the software. Look at the text. Is uh, it, it? It remains white. Right. Yeah. Throughout. Yeah, so that's, that's the yeah. The on-screen display is always mm -hmm. white. Yep. And so that's why I said I, it. Um, it kind of has to do some software trickery to where it's yeah, it's guess, an yeah, it's yeah. an inverse but it's not let's say a true inverse like that to where it's you know going to blow yeah. out your screen yeah because if you had this you wouldn't be able to see the text because everything would be white yep and also yeah. all that white probably blow so out your screen explains, yeah why i guess why they do it uh so yeah so it's really you know it's a very different thing like you can see just how so this is what is this is the black yeah, black hot. Yep. This is inverted black hot and white hot. It's very different. It's like you know, you'd have to kind of change uh, the the brightness on this one quite a bit to get it to look anything like. I mean, you can't because the information is lost mm -hmm. at this point. But it's it's interesting just how different they are. White hot. All right. So I just want to check, like someone asked me some questions. Uh, so you, you don't know about the, the distance measuring, like radar and stuff like that, because that would be a different system. Yeah, that would be a, that would be a different one. And so unless that information is being um, uh, passed to this display, this has no way uh, to do that. Unless, uh, you know, it's using its, uh, its laser to target it, but, right. it's, but it's not doing that. Yeah. Uh, do you know if there's any difference, like between like air-to-air -air modes or air-to-ground modes or anything like that, like in the way it tracks things? In the way it, it's only in software that it's actually different. It but it functions exactly the same. The air-to-air -air mode is actually, believe it or not, simpler. Yeah. And uh, I think because I think it's because uh, in air to air, there is like whatever is always being tracked in the air. The case in point, this is always going to be a sharp contrast to whatever else is around it. As far as yeah, the heat signature, yeah. as far as on the ground, that's not so much. You don't have this, you know, um, you know, hot jet turbine, and and plus now you're also surrounded by um you know earth <laughs> as well so uh yeah. it has to do things different so uh i know in air to ground mode they also have what is called scene tracking as well and so i yeah tracking the ground yes and again it, on the ground yeah it's just saying hey i want to you know track a point on the ground because it's really hard to try to discern a target on here so i want you to take this information and try to stay on this while my aircraft moves around and then we can kind of you know discuss you know what needs to be done over here or what we're looking at but you know uh you know this this little dot here the, mm -hmm. the heading q are you familiar with how that's calculated where it should be that is just 
Well, that's information that's uh, just brought in uh, from the from the aircraft. All right. Uh, so you're going to see that roll around, and then that should get to zero when it reaches top dead center. Yeah, it uh, it doesn't. <laughs> it's it's well, like it's zero to... right there. Yeah. Yeah, but like it's, it's dead center here at three right, mm -hmm. so it's, it's a little bit different. It. it it, you know, we think we worked out what it was like that it's, it's, um, I can't even remember exactly what it is now, but it's, it's kind of like, uh, I, the angle in the plane of the wings rather than the angle in the plane of the ground. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think it's an angle indicator. I think it's more like a, a heading indicator. Right. And yeah. so, you know, yeah. that now the, let's say the, the USU and the, um, and the, uh, the airplane, now they, they meet up at that point. But, you know, if you're still in a bank, then, yeah, you're going to be viewing, you know, differently. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Anything else? Uh, uh, you, you, you got anything else to, uh, <laughs> to, to suggest like, to, that could help resolve this at all? Well, I, the only thing I can add is, is really not... Um, helpful in just that uh this is to me bizarre okay it's it's a it's bizarre in that uh uh kind of like you know what you were showing with the blobs earlier well they're blobs but they're amorphous like they're constantly changing this stays yeah. quite uniform well, um i mean it, it's it does change a bit like if you watch this uh, i meant like kind of like almost like a, a fluid thing like a, like yeah. almost like a flame on a torch moving around. Right. This stays okay, it's not, not flickering. Yeah, this stays largely uh, yeah. uniform. Now uh, people get shape. Yeah, uh, it's got fat there, and then mm -hmm. you know, it's got quite different there. Yeah, and I would yeah. think, Elongated. especially you know, given the the hot you know nature of it, that uh, we are looking at the the rear and propulsion of something yeah just yeah. cannot tell what that something is yeah and that's that's kind of like what i'm trying to do with the uh um let's see the the situation recreation thing here which is where is everything Gimbal. This is a gimbal. I'll let you open and grab, grab a drink. Sure. I am back. So this float. Like Okay, real quick was uh, my attempt at recreating the the possible scenario mm -hmm. uh like kind of viewed from above this is the flight path of the jet itself you mm -hmm. see the, the little app player down there I'll turn the jet on as well yet uh it flies along that path and then it's looking along these these lines of sight towards something ignore those curly things and then over here there is another jet it's flying along this line of path i think i can find it over here somewhere Oops. where did you get this information from well it, it it's, it's essentially derived from the uh re reload it it's derived from the information in the video like it's just, it's just matching things like the roll angle and the uh, the heading angle and the pitch angle and then just uh you know, from you can recreate the the trajectory of the the jet because you know how fast it's going mm. and what altitude it's going and what its bank angles are uh, i just meant with the, with the other jet uh, with the other jet what that is is it is it we know that it has to traverse these lines of sight so it has to go from here to you know the other line and so it's basically calculating using various different methods what's the optimal way of doing that so in this instance i'm setting uh, constant airspeed so I'm, I'm saying like yeah if this is a jet flying at a constant airspeed of 340 knots what would it look like so i could adjust that mm. speed and we get different different paths 
uh, for the, the other jet, the theoretical other jet. And we can change the distance that it's at as well, and that gives us different paths. Now, when you say the other jet, are you talking uh, wingman? Uh, and other jet, you make, it could theoretically be a wingman, but it, it would, you know, in this instance, it's it's the target, essentially. Oh, okay. Like, it's in target. in okay. theory, what we are looking at is another jet, mm -hmm. and we're looking at its, its tailpipe exhaust you know, from this jet, uh, and then it's creating this image. So here I do a, a recreation, which is just a view from this jet of the other jet, mm -hmm. and uh, I've stuck a glare on it, and have the the roll match the uh, the roll of the uh, uh, the app player pod. Uh, and I think let's see, I can turn that off. Turn off the glare. Glare. So if I turn off the glare, then there's a theoretical plane behind it. Uh, which is turns out to be quite small in this particular scenario, but you can change, mm -hmm. let's say, the the initial heading, uh, the initial distance. So it's set to thirty. So if I, I bring it closer, it gets like you know, super big. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, I've set it to a certain distance, which seems to make sense. But it ends up being quite quite a small jet. So it's a small, distant jet giving a, a very hot heat signature with quite a large glare in this particular scenario. And then we've got things like here's the the tail angle of the jet, which is you know, the angle between the you know what's the the basically the axis of the the camera and the the distant jet. So it has to remain fairly small for it to stay hot. Uh, so you got to try to find a scenario in which you get a fairly small tail angle, like less than twenty degrees or so. And then the other ones are just demonstrating that it has a nice stable altitude. Which is uh, mm. yeah, what you'd expect from another jet flying along, and the apparent size would have to match the apparent size of uh, the glare, but that doesn't actually um, doesn't actually match because it's a glare. So it's the the apparent size isn't a, a straight function of distance. But anyway, this is, this is a much more complicated like set of uh, <laughs> of, uh, of parameters and everything. Mm. But uh, yeah, let, trying to get something that actually makes sense. And of course, people have different ideas. Like some people think that it's uh, much closer, like in this, this scenario here. The other idea is that it's following this path, this little green path here, which uh, ends up being this kind of weird horizontal and then going up in the air path. And you see, I put in a little flying saucer here instead of a glare, because people think it's like an actual saucer-shaped craft, and they think it's doing the same type of, you know, some kind of weird motion. And they they say that that it's this is more likely because it it sounds more like what uh, was reported at the time that it was only ten nautical miles away. And this is the supposed fleet of other objects that they talk about in the video. This is super complicated stuff that you know, we don't really have time to get into right now. Yeah, I just wanted to, to show you that you know it's yeah. stuff that I've been been working on and probably will. No, I, I think I, I think it's a wonderful job modeling. Um, this is yeah, it's it's, it's quite fantastic, uh, uh, yeah, which is cool because you could use it to analyze a lot of different things. It's just unfortunate. Let's say this video in particular, there just isn't a lot of information. Yeah. The, the the my my analysis is that uh, this is not uh, an anomaly within the sensor, and that it is a thing. <laughs> right. Just don't know what which, the, which the thing with. is. I agree that it's a thing. Uh, the question is: Is well, this the shape of the thing? Yeah, and that's that's going to be too hard to 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 really tell because let's say um you know when i was you know testing you know these things in production we weren't testing them against you know uh the exhaust of aircraft <laughs> you know we're yeah. testing these you know against you know, like um you know find uh you know defined bars of lines and things like that and you know focusing them in and you know basically simulating distances and you know making sure that you know it's reading the correct temperature, you know, of things at different, you know, focal lengths and stuff. So this is uh, something uh, quite different. The, 
the one thing that I can relate to that probably more than let's say some of the others that were you know on the same program is that I do have a you know big fascination with uh, fixed wing aircraft and you know they've always had a fascination with with jets as well so uh, this here uh, yet I mean it still could you know be you know a jet and the one thing that I'd say lends credibility to that of course is that yeah you've got you know this this big you know heat plume mm-hmm. that, that we're seeing so all right well <laughs> i guess you haven't ruled it out the, the possibility so that's, that's one thing no and and yeah that's what i'm hoping is you know you know maybe you know there's a little more clarity about you know what uh not so much about what it is about more than what it isn't <laughs> yeah but yeah no i'd like to i'd like to learn more i'd like to see more video I, i'd like to see some more video to compare it with i mean that's the mm-hmm. big issue that we have is that we don't have very much I don't suppose you have a secret stash of, of Atlea videos no, on your no. hard drive somewhere. <laughs> no, I don't. But it's like you know, um, I I just happened to kind of stumble across that that thing on CNN. I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. And I think the reason it popped up is because you know I've been doing the F18, you know, mm-hmm. a lot lately within the last uh, month. So it said, okay, watch this, <laughs> yeah. because you know it's from you know an F18 pilot. And I was like, and I was like, okay, well, my way, I. You know, I know this system, you know, quite well. And then I kind of started reading to the comments. I'm like, ooh, this is kind of going all over the place. So, all right, here, yeah. this, this is what it, you know, is not. And that's how it all started. And now it's like, yeah. geez, I think yeah. it's like a thousand yeah, likes yeah. on the thing. Yeah, and I, and I know, like, you know, I, I agree with you about it not being a bug and it not being, like, you know, stuck pixels and everything. And, uh, you know, it might be a jet, but... Uh, I guess so. Uh, so someone suggested a duck. <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> that is yeah, one hell of a duck. <laughs> Thunderfoot. Yeah, uh, suggested that I think, which seemed a little silly, like thinking it was a bird. Uh, yeah, other things might be birds, but this one definitely is is, is not. It's, that's uh, a phoenix because that thing is on fire. Yeah, or, or it's a dragon, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I gotta I gotta go. So, like, thank you very much for doing this. This is gonna be very interesting. So, is it okay if I if I share this with other people? Then? Yeah, this absolutely. Video. And, um, right. you know, I, I was going to, uh, you know, I asked the same as well. Be like, okay, I'll, you know, I'll make a, you know, a quick uh, video about this because people were asking about it yeah. in the comments. And I was like, no, it, you know, I watched your video and I was like, th- I think that we, we could have a good conversation because it seems like we have a good, um, for one, a uh, like kind of technical mindset for one. Right. But that, you know, also, you know, a curiosity of, you know, the, this subject as well. And, um, well, both my, old men. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh, knocking on 50 this year. So, well, you're a young man then. <laughs> oh. I got you beat. Oh, probably not, probably not too far though. I'm 55. Yeah. It's not too far. So I'm, uh, yeah. yeah, five, six years off. Yeah. But uh, this is, uh, you know, to me, it's like kind of a nice impetus because, you know, there's uh, there's still as much as a, like I, I like to say I have like kind of a scientific mindset and approach to things. Um, I do like a fascination with the unknown. And I, th- I think uh, a lot of people share that. But with that in that, I don't want to say that you know, automatically going into something is where like, this is automatically disproved before I even see it, or yeah. it is automatically the thing before I see it. Yeah. I, I would rather gather the evidence and make a, a informed decision. Like so I, I yeah. kind of like to take a scientific approach to things because, Hey, that's how, that's how we discover things. Indeed. Yeah. And I, I still have hope that we can figure out what's going on here. Yeah, me too, because it's it's yeah. odd. And uh, uh, one, one of the things that I did want to uh, point out is that uh, I, I think I did make mention in the, in the comments was that uh, I, I really don't see a reason of why uh, pilots would suddenly conjure up stories yeah. in, in, you know, that, you know, aren't, you know, credible. Um, you know, especially when, you know, others, 
I have seen this and then now, or, you know, they're also with other pilots that have seen the same thing. You know, they have their Wizzo with them or they have, uh, you know, wingmen with them that are seeing some of these same things. And then there's some of these um, other instances where these things are going on as well. So yeah, no, uh, they've usually been, you know, quite, you know, uh, credible and... Um, I'd say kind of pragmatic in how they um, carry themselves uh, through these. Do, do they have all the information? No. I, I seen some kind of make some, eh, I wouldn't say snap judgments, but maybe leaning towards something. I was like, well, may want to look into something a little uh, further. But um, that's kind of the one thing that's in common, though, which is um, a little odd. Now, you know, most people are saying, hey, does this, you know, prove aliens? Of course, it's 100% aliens. But, <laughs> no, it's, <I'll> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, hey, you know what? The 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 chance is never zero <laughs> right now. Yeah, and, no, and to, and, I, I, let's keep it on the list. Yeah, let's it's it's like, it, it may be point zero 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 one, but until you can 100% rule it out, yeah. you know, it's not that. But there are many other things that are going on in this on this planet with all these different countries even private things going on yeah. as well so you have to wow. keep the realm of possibility open for a lot of things and we're only going to find out the the more and better information that we get indeed well thank you very much for this very interesting conversation i gotta go and have my dinner now my wife yeah. is knocking at the door yeah well uh, thank you mick i do appreciate it. if you do have any more questions that i can help with yeah uh, let me know, and if I think of anything, I'll definitely uh, send it yeah. your way. 